Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a little bit since I posted my last video. If you saw my latest community post, you know that we've had a lot going on recently. I'm gonna try to film an update in the next couple of days and get that up sometime this week, but we just had a lot going on and I haven't been able to upload. But in today's video, I do have some more really quick and easy dinner ideas. These are gonna be perfect for a busy weeknight or if you have a lot going on, these are just gonna be some really simple dinner ideas. If this is your first time stopping by my channel, I just want to say welcome. My name is Caitlin. I share a lot of really quick and easy dinner ideas, things that are budget friendly or just very simple to throw together. So if that is something that you're interested in, make sure you're subscribed and let's go ahead and get into all of these dinner ideas. For this first dinner, I'm making a Mexican beef and rice casserole. This is great because it's a one pot dish as well. So I'm just starting off by heating up a little bit of olive oil, probably about a tablespoon. And then I'm adding in one pound of some lean ground beef, as well as one chopped up onion. And I'm just gonna cook all of this together until my meat is all the way cooked through and my onions are nice and translucent in color. Now after my ground beef had cooked all the way through, I'm adding in a big scoop of some minced garlic as well as about a package of some taco seasoning. You can use what you have on hand, you can use homemade or a store-bought, either will work just fine for this recipe, but just get that mixed into the ground beef. And then we're gonna add in the rest of the ingredients. So this is about a cup of some beef broth or you can also use vegetable broth. And then you're gonna want a can of some black beans as well as a can of some Rotel tomatoes. And then for the corn, I chose to use frozen so I added in about a cup of that or you can also use a can and then for seasonings I have a teaspoon of some chili powder half a teaspoon of some ground cumin and then here is about one cup of some white rice and I'm just gonna bring that up to a simmer where it just starts to boil After all of this comes up to a boil, you're just going to add a lid and then turn it down to a low heat. And you're gonna let this simmer for about 16 to 18 minutes just until all of that rice is cooked through. I did end up having to add in a little bit of extra water and it worked out totally fine. And this turned out really great. I did add some cheese on top and just let that melt down. But this was really good and very easy. It also made for really good leftovers. And my kids really, really like this one. So if you have kids that like rice, this is is a really great option. Now for this next dinner, I'm making a homemade pizza and you guys always ask me how I make my pizza dough. So I figured I would show you in today's video. So I always like to use this Fleischmann's bread machine yeast, even though I don't use a bread machine, but you're gonna want two and a quarter teaspoon of that and just add that into your stand mixer. And then you're gonna want about a cup of some warm water, give it a little mix together and then you're gonna let that sit for about five minutes. After this mixture has sat for about five minutes, it should have bubbles on top and you're ready to add in the rest of your ingredients. So you're gonna to want to add in one teaspoon of some regular salt, as well as about two teaspoons of some olive oil. And then you're also going to want to add in your flour. So the recipe calls for about two and a half to three and a half cups of flour. Now I always start with the two and a half cups and I hardly need to add any in after this. Sometimes I will add a little bit, but for the most part, two and a half cups is about right. So I'm just going to attach my dough hook on here and I'm gonna mix this up on a level two and it's gonna form a really nice dough. After it's kind of formed into a ball, I'm gonna mix it for about two more minutes and then I'm gonna just add this right into a bowl with some olive oil. And you can just do it right in this glass bowl here, but I will usually toss mine into a separate glass bowl with that olive oil. And you're gonna let this rise for about one hour. Make sure to cover it with a towel, put it in a warm spot and it should be ready in about an hour. After about an hour, the dough should have doubled in size. It should look just like this. So you're gonna just punch the dough down and then we are ready to add it onto the pizza pan. I will link the pizza pan that I have down below. I've had it for years. I really like this one because it's very large. It definitely makes a large size pizza. So perfect for a larger family. This definitely would feed us for a good couple of meals. So this is gonna be perfect if you have a larger family, but you're just gonna press that right into your baking sheet. And then I like to add a couple of holes 
and then I will pop mine in the oven for just a couple of minutes at about 410 degrees. I will bake it for about like seven minutes just to kind of firm it up before adding in all of the extra ingredients. I feel like this helps prevent the crust from getting soggy. I know a lot of people just add everything on there, but I always like to pre-bake mine a little bit. On this particular night, I decided to keep this pizza super basic with just some regular pizza sauce, some mozzarella cheese, as well as some pepperoni, Canadian bacon, and mushrooms. But of course, you can use whatever toppings you want here. We also love to do like a barbecue chicken pizza or buffalo chicken ranch. It's so, so good. I will try and link those recipes down below because I know I've shared those in past videos. But just load this pizza up with whatever toppings you want, and then you're going to bake it in a 410 degree oven for about like 12 to 15 minutes just depending on how done you want your crust to be but this is definitely one of our favorite dinner ideas our kids love to have pizza night and it's so fun to make it at home as a family For this next dinner, I'm making a creamy chicken scampi. This one was really good and definitely took away my craving for some Olive Garden. So I'm starting off with about a tablespoon of olive oil and about a tablespoon of butter and I'm just melting that together in my skillet. And then I'm adding in three chicken breasts here that I have cut up into some bite-sized pieces. Now you can season your chicken with whatever you want, but I chose to add on some oregano, some Italian seasoning, onion powder, garlic powder, as well as a little bit of paprika and some salt and pepper, but definitely play around with the seasonings on the chicken and add whatever you like. While my chicken is cooking up in the pot, I'm just adding in some linguine noodles into my pot. You could also use spaghetti for this if you want, but go ahead and add whatever pasta that you want. And then of course I'm gonna salt the water and then just cook those noodles up until they're all the way cooked through. After my chicken has fully cooked through, I'm just removing it over to a separate plate and I'm actually gonna be using this same skillet to cook up my sauce in for the pasta. It's gonna have all of that good flavor added right into the sauce. So into that same skillet, I'm adding in just a couple tablespoons of butter. I let that melt down and then I'm also adding in quite a bit of garlic, probably a good like two to three tablespoons. And I'm just gonna cook that up for about 30 seconds. Now I'm adding in one cup of some chicken broth and then I'm also going to add in about a quarter cup of some heavy whipping cream. You could also use half and half here if you want to, but you're just going to bring all of this up to a simmer until it just starts to boil. Once it has started boiling, it is going to be time to add in our Parmesan cheese. So for this recipe, you're going to want about half a cup of some grated Parmesan. Go ahead and sprinkle that in there. And this is also the time that you're going to want to taste it, add any extra seasoning, just let all of that cheese melt in there this is going to thicken up and then we're gonna add in the pasta that we had cooked up so like I said just add in a whole box of whatever your favorite type of pasta is I chose to use linguine on this night and it worked out great but I'm just gonna stir this all up add in the chicken add any extra seasonings that I wanted to I did end up adding in some extra salt and pepper but of course you can really play around with the seasonings on this one and it turned out really really good our family really enjoyed it. it also made for really great leftovers the next couple of days so I really think you guys will like this recipe very family friendly and delicious For this next dinner, I'm making some hobo chicken and potatoes, which sounds funny, but you guys, these turned out so, so good. So I'm starting off by cutting up my potatoes. So the recipe actually called for the small baby red potatoes, but I just chose to use the bigger red potatoes and I just cut them into some smaller pieces. But you're definitely gonna want these in small pieces. I would say about an inch in size, I think would be about right for this recipe. So I just got all of those potatoes chopped up and then I'm making my ranch and butter sauce. 
So this is three tablespoons of melted butter, and I just mixed that up with one tablespoon of some ranch seasoning. And this is gonna go right onto our potatoes. So you're gonna want to add on two tablespoons of this onto your red potatoes, and just mix all of that together. I should mention that I did cut this recipe in half, but I will have the original recipe linked down below in my description. Now that the potatoes are prepped and ready to go, I'm just getting my aluminum foil ready. So I have two large pieces of tin foil here that I'm just spraying with some olive oil. And then I'm gonna add my chicken right onto this. So this is just two large chicken breasts. Make sure to cut any extra fat or anything like that off. And then I'm taking all of the potatoes and I'm just kind of laying them right around the chicken breast. And that will work perfect. You could also add extra veggies to this recipe, but I just added the potatoes this time. I'm taking the remaining butter from the potatoes and I'm just drizzling that right on top of the chicken. This made it so juicy and flavorful. I did add just a little bit of salt and pepper on there. Of course, you can add some extra seasoning if you want to, but I thought the ranch seasoning was enough. And then I'm just wrapping these up with the tin foil to make a little pocket. And then these are gonna get popped right into the oven on a baking sheet. I baked these at 425 degrees for about 45 minutes until the chicken was all the way cooked through and the potatoes were fork tender. After my potatoes and my chicken were done cooking, I just opened up the little foil packets and I'm gonna be adding on some shredded cheddar cheese. This made them super creamy and delicious. You guys, I really enjoyed these little hobo packets. I just popped them back in the oven for a couple of minutes just until that cheese had melted. And these were so good. They were super delicious paired with a veggie on the side. Definitely a fun little dinner idea. Well, that is going to wrap up this what's for dinner video. I really hope that you all enjoyed it. And thank you so much for being patient with me over the last week or so. I know I have been very MIA. I will try and get that update out for you sometime in the next week or so, just depending on everything going on. But thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. As a young girl, it feels we're mine. We played hide and seek for hours. Raised our shadows among the pines So offshore, playful and free Without a 